We've looked at hybridization to make single bonds and lone pairs. What happens when there is a double or triple bond? We mentioned earlier that single bonds are made with one sigma bond, double bonds contain one sigma and one pi, and triple bonds contain one sigma and two pi bonds. Each bond, whether single, double, or triple, has one sigma bond. Sigma bonds are made using hybrid orbitals. The electrons are found along the internuclear axis, which is the imaginary line connecting the nuclei of the atoms in the bond. Sigma bonds can rotate freely. I like to think of this like a Rubik's cube, where one side can rotate relative to the other sides. Double and triple bonds contain pi bonds. Pi bonds are made from unhybridized p orbitals. The electrons in these bonds can be found above and below the internuclear axis. Pi bonds restrict rotation. Since they stick up and down, they block the bond from rotating. Let's look at hybridization in a molecule with a double bond. First, we draw the Lewis structure. Then we count the domains on the central atom. In this case, we have two carbons, which are basically identical. So whatever we figure out for one carbon will also apply to the other one. Each carbon has two single bonds and one double bond so it has three domains. We draw the ground state orbital diagram of the central carbon atom, again following the alpha principle and Huhn's rule. We still maximize the unpaired electrons by promoting the electron out of the 2s into the 2p. We use our magic number, which is our number of domains. We have three domains. So we take three atomic orbitals to make three hybrid orbitals. Notice we are not taking all of the orbitals that have electrons. We have to go based on our magic number. We take one s and two p's to make sp2 hybrid orbitals. We also have an unhybridized p orbital that has one electron in it. We leave it alone and it stays at the same energy as before. The three sp2 hybrid orbitals are used for sigma bonding. Two are used for bonding to the hydrogens. They overlap with an s orbital on the hydrogen atom. The other sp2 hybrid orbital is used for bonding to the other carbon. That sigma bond is made from the sp2 hybrid orbital from one carbon, overlapping with an sp2 hybrid orbital from the other carbon. They are sigma bonds because they are along the internuclear axis. The unhybridized p orbital on each carbon has one electron. The p orbitals can overlap above and below the internuclear axis to make a pi bond. In that whole red and blue space above and below the internuclear axis, there are two electrons, one contributed from each carbon atom. That's what makes it a double bond. There is the sigma from the sp2 hybrid orbitals and the pi from the unhybridized p orbitals. Let's look at a molecule with a triple bond. We draw the Lewis structure and count the number of domains on the central atom. Again, we will focus on one carbon, but whatever we figure out for one carbon will also apply to the other one because they are basically identical. Each carbon has a single bond and a triple bond, so that is two domains. We draw the ground state diagram of the central carbon atom. We again maximize the unpaired electrons by promoting out of the 2s and into the 2p. We use our magic number, which in this molecule is two, since there are two domains on each carbon. We combine two atomic orbitals to make two hybrid orbitals. We take an s and a p and make sp hybrid orbitals. There are two unhybridized p orbitals, which each have one electron. The sp hybrid orbitals are used for making sigma bonds. One sigma bond is an sp hybrid orbital from carbon overlapping with an s orbital from hydrogen. The other sigma bond is an sp hybrid orbital from one carbon overlapping with an sp hybrid orbital from the other carbon. These are sigma because the overlap is along the internuclear axis. The unhybridized p orbitals make pi bonds. Remember, the p orbitals are perpendicular to each other. 
the p orbital that is pointing up and down in one carbon can overlap with the p orbital that is parallel in the other carbon to make one pi bond. The p orbital that is pointing front and back in one carbon can overlap with the p orbital that is parallel in the other carbon to make the other pi bond. One pi bond points up and down, the other pi bond points front and back. Each pi bond contains two electrons, one from each carbon atom. Total, it is a triple bond containing a sigma bond made from sp hybrid orbitals and two pi bonds made from unhybridized p orbitals. Molecules that have multiple resonance structures can have delocalized pi bonds. One example is benzene. Benzene can be drawn as a pair of resonance structures. The pi bonds are shifted around in one structure compared to the other. Each carbon has two single bonds and a double bond, so it has three domains and is therefore sp2 hybridized. The sp2 hybrid orbitals make three sigma bonds. Two of the sigma bonds are with the neighboring carbon atoms, and one is with the attached hydrogen. All of the sigma bonds are in the plane of the ring because they are along the internuclear axes. Each carbon also has an unhybridized p orbital, which contains one electron. It can make a pi bond with its neighboring carbon, but which one? Each carbon has two carbons next to it, which each have a p orbital with one electron. It turns out it doesn't have to choose. It can pi bond with both, but it's not going to be a full pi bond with each. The pi bonds are delocalized around the ring. The electrons in the pi bonds are found above and below the plane of the molecule, basically in rings. The benzene molecule is often drawn with a circle in the middle to indicate its ring of pi bonding. Which of the following contains delocalized pi bonds? Is it A, the carbonate ion, B, water, C, carbon tetrachloride, or D, CHCl3? The correct answer is A, the carbonate ion. First of all, for it to have pi bonding at all, it must have double or triple bonds. Answer choices B through D have only single bonds and therefore only have sigma bonds. They cannot have delocalized pi bonds. The carbonate ion not only has a pi bond, but that pi bond can be different places around the molecule depending on which of the resonance structures is drawn. Anytime a molecule has multiple resonance structures, it has delocalized pi bonding.